Okay, so uh, good evening and uh, good morning to everybody, uh, and uh, thank you for your time. Um, uh, go uh, from Synspective, and uh, it seems like 70% of the people are hearing Synspective for the first time. Uh, so we are a satellite uh, developer for SAR, and we also operate, and we also do uh, solution and analytics uh, product development to provide to our customers. And today I will like to go over uh, with the topic of can SAR data be utilized for effective decision making? So this will be a little bit based on uh, more of a commercial things, uh, not too much of a, a deep technology things, but more of a challenges we are facing as a, a industry, uh, as our company are facing and uh, what we are trying to do to overcome those and hopefully make uh, uh, these, these SAR data something much more useful uh, to everybody. So uh, since we don't have much time, I would like to start off with this. Uh, so can SAR data be utilized for effective decision making? This, uh, the answer to this, I will start with the answer first, uh, is yes. Maybe this is because we, uh, I'm coming from a, a SAR industry a company, uh, but we have this but uh, afterward. So there are many challenges. There are many places that uh, we feel it's still difficult to utilize. And I would like to uh, uh, touch on that in this uh, presentation. So today I'll go over briefly on the, uh, what SAR is. Uh, I won't go too deep on it. I think other two can explain much, much better on that part but uh, I'll go over some of the challenges we are seeing uh, when you want to use these data for decision-making, especially like for industry-wise decision-making and what kind of uh, uh, challenges we see when we are actually trying to realize that and uh, also how we see the market are changing and trying to overcome these challenges and how us, Synspective, is trying to overcome those and at the end, I'd like to go over a little bit on how, what kind of decision making we could do with uh, uh, these SAR data. So uh, briefly, uh, as uh, what SAR is, uh, maybe some of uh, you have uh, touched these data before, but um, if you can look at this image here in the middle, uh, so the left top uh, image with the color, it's the optical image. You, I think many of the uh, uh you have seen it before it's uh, you click on google uh map and you can change it to satellite and you would see something like this and uh, we'll use this as some uh reference to uh, how SAR is different to that and on right with the black and white it's the SAR image so what what it's uh, uh the difference is uh, basically is the way that we collect data is uh Different. So optical, you get uh, reflectance from sunlight on the Earth's surface, and you capture that data, and you make mostly make it into an image like the one that is shown here. And for SAR, uh, it's the satellite that's emitting the microwave. It's a gigahertz band microwave, and you get the reflectance from the Earth's surface, and you acquire that data. So uh, with these difference, uh, it's. it's more of a set to be kind of a condition as it depends on uh, how you use it. It's not actually the case here, but uh, this opt optical satellite, it's uh, difficult to capture uh, these colorful images at night and uh, it's difficult to see through cloud uh, as you, would, you are seeing here, as uh, you would see the cloud and not the earth's surface uh, behind it. And for SAR, you can see, through the clouds, a uh, smog or some plume of smoke as it penetrates uh, through those and can capture at night as it emits its own microwave uh, through its uh, satellite uh, antennas. And uh, the characteristics of these data, uh, it's uh, for the optical one, uh, I think as you can see, it's very easy on human eyes. You uh, look at it, you know what uh, it's showing if it's uh, green you would think it's a forest so it's very in easy to uh, interpret and uh, very in uh, intuitive and you can look at it like a color photo image and for uh, the SAR one 
this one uh it's uh, we are making it into a image here but uh, basically the data itself it's uh, made from intensity of microwave and phase value and uh, it's a little bit difficult to to understand with human eyes and you have to have certain background knowledge but the big uh, uh, difference we see with the SAR is that uh, since it can penetrate to cloud, uh, even though it's difficult to uh, understand its data, we can uh, use it for uh, monitoring use uh, much easier when you want to collect the data. Let's say like daily, you want it at a certain time, uh, a certain day, uh, you want to collect that data, there's a better chance that you can get that data. So uh, with this in mind, what are the challenges that we face uh, the, when you, we want to do decision making? So one is that the SAR data itself, uh, the data is much, much more complex and it actually requires a certain processing skill. Even to get that image, you need to process it to a certain level uh, to get that black and white image. And sometimes the interpretation gets, uh, can be very vague of uh, the output and when you are thinking about decision making this vagueness it's uh, sometimes uh, a, a stopper uh, like a blocker to use it for decision making and other things are like the data frequency is low uh, due to lack of satellites and the data cost is still high so uh, how we see the challenges when we want to overcome these is uh, uh, as follows here. So uh, uh, another thing that uh, if we want to use it for decision making, especially in certain industry, uh, there's these uh, issues that we, we are seeing. So SAR itself, it's not familiar, uh, especially when you talk with the industries, uh, they never heard of it or never touched it before. And you would require certain expertized knowledge to use it. And these people are very hard to find in, in the world. And also the SAR data itself, maybe because it's not like a familiar data or because it requires expertise uh, knowledge, uh, identifying that value of SAR, it's uh, very difficult for, for um, industry to, to like identify it themselves. So uh, there's this lack of like a gap there where uh, there's many research being done, good uh, output are there, but then uh, when you want to use it for industry, uh, for decision-making, there's a big gap there. Like, can we, can the industry really use it? Can one company really use it? And then uh, there's this uh, another challenge that uh, we need much, much more number of satellite to actually uh, have it used for uh, more daily use of uh, decision-making. And how we see that market is trying to overcome these things. Uh, so uh, we are seeing that the, each, there are many companies rising up, uh, being built, and uh, uh, each company is creating their own stance in this market and uh, with their own vision of how to address it. And uh, there are companies like on top of uh, here uh, with the SAR underneath it, there's ISI, Capella Space. We are similar to those company uh, it's inspective, so we built our own satellite, but the way we vision this, it's a, a kind of different from those. But the trend itself is that there are more company uh, that are building these uh, uh, sensor satellite or operating those, uh, contributing to much uh, more number of uh, satellite and hopefully reducing the actual price of these satellite uh, data. And there are many companies uh, like it, here, it says in under platform and analytics company that are trying to make the data much easier to use from data perspective, analytics per perspective, and uh, also creating some platform that you can just connect with certain easy code uh, and those things and making it much, much easier for the, the uh, users to use. So the, the trend itself, uh, it's uh, going in a, direction that is trying to address the challenges that I just mentioned. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, we feel that it's, it's a good, good trend. And how we are addressing the, this market uh, ourselves as Synspective, it's a little bit different from, uh, you might say, from 
like Umbra. Like they say that they have, uh, they will not do analytics, but for us, we are actually focused a lot on uh, analytics. So what we want to be doing as Inspective is to uh, make uh, the SAR data much, much easier to use for the industry to be actually using it for their everyday decision making. So what we want to be doing is uh, we want to create the SAR data by creating SAR satellite and operating them and creating constellation and um, making lots of satellite, maybe 10 or 20 of satellite in the orbit that you can collect uh, data daily. And then uh, we also want to uh, help with the data understanding of these uh, complex data by using data science and analytics. So we have these uh inside our company and uh, the the usage of this data understanding it's not just it will help the users uh understand the data easier but uh we are hoping that we can feed back what we experience with the industry to our satellite uh, uh development and production and its operation that are more suitable for this uh usage uh for example you might want certain orbit for certain area uh of uh, industry you might want certain uh, specification for that satellite for certain solution so we want to be understanding those working closely with the industry so uh for that data understanding thing uh what we have in place now uh we are collaborating with m many industries uh we set some target industry to develop their uh, analytics so one it's called land displacement monitoring it uh, you can see some displacement uh in millimeters uh and we work with the construction company mining company uh, and also energy company uh, mainly to look at the like uh, uh, risks of uh, some maybe um collapse of uh, uh, buildings or some roads some uh, land that might have a sinkhole those things and we also have uh, other uh, analytics like a flood damage assessment where you can see the area of uh, flood uh, flooded area and also disaster damage assessment similar to flood damage assessment like a landslide where that happened uh, how much damage it caused uh, and uh, also we have also have a uh, analytics like forestry inventory monitoring which is very focused on forestry owners uh, also paper companies that are managing their own forest and uh, they might want to harvest a forest and want to understand how much forest are being harvested uh, we we are trying to provide some analytics for that and another one is that we are trying to provide some offshore uh, wind uh, assessment uh analytics it gives wind speed to wind farm developers uh for offshore so uh okay we still have just a few more minutes okay and uh so what and who uh our, our inspective is addressing it's uh, a little bit already shown on the slide before uh but uh, what we are providing is the SAR raw data here in the middle so it's a little bit difficult to see and um, we are also providing the analytics data and right now we are, are not uh, yet there there's still gap for the insight kind of data from the analytics to the insight and who we want to be addressing uh, right now with the SAR raw data we want to always work with the SAR experts and uh, give them the best data that we can give and also uh, remote sensing experts they are, are sometimes uh, also knowledgeable of SAR uh, but uh, and uh, what we are looking for is uh, working very closely with the industry experts uh, like the one that I showed before like a construction company mining company maybe consultants for those uh, uh, categories and providing them with analytics data that is coming uh, from the process data, from uh, the raw data. And uh, for the actual decision-making, uh, there is another uh, leap that is required. So we work closely with these industry experts to create these uh, decision-making insights. Uh, so that is what we want to be addressing and what we are trying to do. And uh, 
the blue line here it's where we are focusing a lot on so uh for saw raw data what it looks like a little bit it's a black and white as shown before uh this one's just an image of uh, uh japanese uh ancient tomb in in osaka area and you can see this uh, kind of image from raw data and uh, what you could see from saw post process data like uh, there are things like interferogram techniques and you might see something like this but uh, when you provide this to the uh, industry expert, uh, most of the time they would say they don't need it as it's very difficult to understand and complex. So what we are trying to work on uh, basically is on this analytics data where we try to change that into like displacement uh, for let's say like a year, how much displacement there is uh, or forestry uh, where uh, for example, how much of harvesting has been done, the area of that harvesting, harvested area, or the wind one, uh, uh, the wind speed or the frequency of that wind speed happening, those statistics. So from these uh, uh, data, uh, uh, by changing into analytics data and hopefully into insight data, uh, what kind of decision making can be done for, through SAR? is uh, uh, we see it in three stages. So when you are planning something that is before doing something, doing a, uh, having an event, uh, for example, like project planning. And also we see that you can use it for uh, monitoring use where you could use it for like risk assessment. Do you want to stop uh, some construction work? Do you want to still go, go with that? Do you want to dispatch something? and we also see what that we can use it for like after something has happened like um, after a disaster has happened then you want to uh, maybe think about how to uh, fix that city and uh, understand the progress that has been done for certain work so uh, to conclude all can SAR data be utilized for effective decision making uh, the answer I would say is yes but there are still some gaps that need to be filled and it might take a little bit more time to become fully, fully useful in uh, many of the industry. There are already industry that are using it, but it's a very small amount and uh, uh, it might take time for, for other industry to, to actually fully use it. So thank you uh, for your audience. And that's uh, the end of my presentation. Mm -hmm.